from River Dikey. One of the questions I get asked a lot is on my solo trip to India, what did I take with me? So today, hopefully, I can answer a few of your questions. In this video, I'm only going to cover the tech parts. This is the technology and gadgets I took with me. So, we will start with the laptop I took. So, I took with me the Microsoft Surface Book. I took this with me because of its lightness, its versatility and its ease of use. The version that I got is 13 and a half inches on the screen as well as touch screen, 16 gigabytes and one terabyte of solid state drive. This ran my software very well. I was using Adobe Premiere Pro. The one terabyte hard drive meant I could copy my files straight from my camera, straight onto the hard drive and do the work. This was very easy to use. The Wi-Fi connection was good wherever I went. It had no issues. And the thing about it is the screen actually comes off so you can use it as a tablet, which comes in handy uh, for when you're doing some quick work. It's all touch screen. I did get the pen, but I didn't use it that much. What I did use was a mouse I got with it. So I'll show you that next. The mouse I got was a Microsoft Arc. It's flat and easy to use. And you just bend it quite straightforward like that and it's ready to use and it's Wi-Fi. So this I found very useful, very handy for when you've got small spaces and uh, you're very limited to how you can work. So for me that was perfect. So them two were great assets to my travel. But also what I did take with me was an external hard drive. I got the G Drive 1 terabyte. Fast for transferring your files over. Good to put the files you're working on onto your laptop, do your work when transfer them over onto this. The only issue I found was, since I was there for so long, uh, for just over four weeks, for five weeks, I ran out of space, I filled this up. So I ended up using quite a bit of the space on the hard drive on the machine itself. Filling up the hard drive does slow the machine down. So I wish I had gone for something maybe two or maybe even four terabytes. It does depend on how long you're there for. I took a lot of video, I walked roughly 400 kilometres. Uh, I didn't film every step I took, but I did film quite a lot of uh, information and a lot. And I did film it all within 4K. So talking about that, we will go on to the camera I used while I was away. So the camera I used while I was away was this Sony 4K camera. Very small, very compact. Uh, this model is, I'll just check the model, this model is the FDR-X300. 4K capabilities, built-in microphone, it's very, very lightweight. So if we compare it next to that mouse, we'll see, it's very small indeed, even next to my phone. The quality of the image was really, really excellent on this. Uh, and this model I came with also come with a viewing screen because it does not have a screen on. The only screen it has on here is to see your main menu. You can't actually see the image. This comes with a small screen, a small little carrier. So you can put that onto, onto your screen as you're walking around. And then it also comes with this water tight housing. I didn't take any of those with me to India. I did get a lens cover. It 
come with this uh, filter one that just goes on uh, I did some practice before I left and found out this made it a little bit too dark so I did go for a proper Sony accessory this clips on and locks I'm glad I took this because of the amount of dust uh, around as I was walking through India I had to clean the screen all the time and having it on if you ever drop it you don't want to actually scratch the lens here because there's no other protection on so having this on actually you can see in some of my videos the amount of dust that kept going on onto the lens so that was easy just to wipe off and not fear about scratching the lens this I am very very impressed with the microphone at the front is front pointing so in quite a few of my videos as I'm walking around I'm talking but you can't quite hear me because of the uh, microphone at the front so I needed to learn to turn around and actually talk a bit louder into it it does catch a sound from all around which as an action cam that's what you want it caught all the sounds of India as I'm walking around and as you can hear in my videos you can actually hear everything that's going on and I'm quite muffled because I'm standing behind it very very excellent camera lightweight fits in your pocket easy to take around I'm very impressed if you are on a, on a solo travel or your baggage you can't take too much I highly recommend this I did have a look at the Hero uh, the GoPro Hero uh, range. Uh, this did come out quite a few years ago, but it's still a very good contender with it. And it's it's not very heavy at all. So that comes highly recommended. So as I took that, I needed to take some spare batteries. So for the spare batteries, I went for a charger like this, that when you are charging, it gives you how much it needs charging and this does three at a time so when you're charging it comes up with a kind of a, a bar here to tell you how much it needs charging and when it charges it stops it switches itself off so this I, I already had three batteries and these batteries last round about 50 minutes each on 4K recording continuously. So I ended up taking six batteries with me. And I must say, I never ran out of battery juice. I came down to my last two uh, while, while walking around. They come in a small compact case. So, what I did, every one that was charged was in a case. When they're uncharged, I just left them out of the case. So I knew when I got back to the hostel or hotel or wherever I could charge, I would charge them up. So six was just about enough for me. Uh, as I say, I did record a lot. I ended up with nearly two terabytes worth of data over them uh, for five weeks. And these weren't that expensive. Um, as I say, these are third party ones and they, they did their job they held the battery power as good as if not better than the actual sony one that came with it so the next thing to talk about will be a tripod or selfie stick as i say it comes with this this is good for walking around pointing at people but not very practical as for walking around the streets and you want to turn it on yourself. So I did have a look at a couple of selfie sticks, uh, tripods, and I will go through them now. This is the first one I looked at. It's small, compact, and it actually is built for, for this. It has a little pinging here as well as a screw on to hold it into place. And as you see, it's quite easy to use. And when you get to your tabletop, 
So this I got before my journey and I took it and I went away at Christmas to check, to test. And one thing I found is as you're walking around, you can you actually got slight movement here. So when you're walking around and you're and you're walking and moving, you can hear the creak in the video. Very slightly, but you can hear a small creak as you're walking around. And when I showed it to people, they couldn't quite hear it, but I could. And when I watched my videos, I could hear that creak, and I found it quite annoying. So, I decided not to take that one with me. I went. It's a good one to use on, on the desk or anything like that, but I don't use it now for walking around because I can hear Especially when you've got the built-in mic, it's so close, you can hear it as you're walking around. So then, a couple of uh, companies i done some research for, and I came back with these two. So, I wanted a, a long one so I could stand it down, and these were a classing as selfie sticks, but I passed this more as a tripod and this one more as a, a selfie stick. So this is the size of them when you get them out of the box. So I tested both of these, and this one was a bit hard walking around trying to take your, your picture, but I found it actually makes a very good tripod. And this goes up, I think it is to 52 inches high. And the thing I like about these, some of these tripods you just pull, this one you have to pull Lock in, it's a twist in locking mechanism. As you can see, it's quite high. But doing some testing on this, I found it amazing. It could even hold a top of a range uh, camera with a big lens on it. So I did test it on a few of my own cameras and one to my wife's cameras and she's got the big Canon 50D Mark II and it could take it, it could take the weight of that and I was very very surprised with that but as I said it wasn't really useful as a selfie stick it was a bit too cumbersome to, to carry around but a good tripod camera for anything from this as I say, up to the big Canon 50D. Now this one, I liked. Small, compact. Even has a little mirror just here. So you can actually see yourself. Excellent for taking your selfies, or filming yourself as you're walking around also excellent as you're walking around just to hold it here maybe move it around as you're walking not very in your face but again it's 50 oh, no this one's 42 inches high so the other one is up here this one's just a little bit lower but again very stable and what i like about it is Give it more stability you can hold that down like that and it's more stable so this is the one i did actually end up taking with me and used every day while i was there i like it you've got the ball head to move it round in place as i say you've got the mirror and also you've got a remote control so this one i could press the button to start recording it slots in there so if I'm walking around and I just want to start recording quickly I could press and it did actually work with it I read some reviews saying uh, the Sony uh, 4k wouldn't work with external remotes I've tried it on others and it hadn't worked but on this one for some reason it picked up the signal and it worked okay so that was a bit of an added bonus for me so you could be walking around and you're You'll see something and you just want to depress. 
which was really excellent. So this one I'd recommend if you are using a smaller camera, uh, action cam or, or even your phone, it does come with a compartment for your phone and remote will work with your phone. This one I recommend if you're using something a little bit bigger. I don't think this one would be any good on my GX8 with a larger uh, lens, but I'll, I'll give it a try. I haven't really tried it. I, I just love it because it's small, compact. With my walking trousers, it fitted in right in my other pocket, and I was well away, and it was perfect. So this one comes highly recommended for bigger cameras, this one comes highly recommended for your smaller uh, cameras. So next then we will talk about uh, the mobile phone and the power banks I took with me. i just clear the desk a little bit. But before we get onto the power banks and the chargers, carrying cases. So with this, I looked for a carrying case and I wanted something small and compact and I went for this one to start off with. This could fit my camera, my spare batteries, my cables, my remote and also I've got a little selfie stick here and it all then folded down into a nice little pack. As I wasn't using this selfie stick here, I was using my other one, that didn't fit into here and that was quite bulky in the end. This is fantastic for travelling normally. Uh, if you're not limited to the amount of space you have. So I went to check, I took this one with me and when I go out and about I take this one with me because I can actually hook it onto my backpack via these straps. But I needed something a bit more smaller and something, since I was only taking the one luggage, it was going to go into uh, the airplane and this I fear might not bash around a little bit. So, because I was taking a rucksack, there wasn't much protection, so I had to look around and I then found this. A lot smaller, but uh, opening it up, I could fit all of my batteries. Two, three, four, five six batteries I wanted to take. My camera. My charger, my charging cable. My spare micro SD cards. This is a homemade muffler I made uh, you can probably hear as I'm going around in some of my videos. This has noise wind cancellation on, but not very good. So I just got a piece of foam, wrapped it round where the microphone is, put that on, and then you've got your own homemade noise and wind muffler. Works fantastic. Have a look in some of my videos, you'll see where I did use it and where I didn't use it. So, yep, yeah. so this even took that. And a hard case. So that's what went into my backpack and into the airplane via the cargo. That was secure and simple. Nice, and as I say, compared to that, less than half the size of what that is. So that is perfect to carry everything when you need to carry everything round, and you you've got the space to take it. But this, if you're travelling light, 
and you want something that's going to keep it secure, that's perfect. So why have we got this out? We talk about the micro SD cards. So the camera, I've got these 128 gig cards. I took one, two, and there's one in here. Three 128 gig cards. And the other one I had here is a spare 64. As I said, I was starting to run out of space on that external one terabyte. So I ended up filling up two of these as well as nearly half of my one terabyte internal hard drive on my uh, laptop. So these did come in handy and I would fill one a day or so. Uh, but every time at the end of each day I did just transfer it over and these were, weren't that much money, but I do recommend don't take one or two, try and take three and maybe something as a small backup just in case. Because one for that day you're using and the spare one with you, but one in case you do start running out of space, you have something to, do, to save it on. And don't forget to take your adapter as well. And don't try and get the cheap adapters. I find the cheap ones don't work very well, so I use a scan disk one, or I actually the Samsung one. The transfer rate is a lot better than what this scan disk one is, and also a lot better than what the cheaper versions are, especially uh, the Kingstons I find them quite slow. I don't know why. But I say the scan disk and the Samsung one seem to be the best. Oops. So now then a ah, couple of more things about the laptop. We're paying one 2000 for a laptop, spend a few quid extra on getting a cover because it does get knocked as you're travelling around, uh, it does get banned and the, this one here, I, I think it was £17 for the cover, is really good or have a go making your own. So this one was made by my sister-in-law uh, for me when I was in check before I actually got the cover because I got the thing, the laptop just for Christmas, ordered a cover, Amazon uh, sent me out the wrong cover, so when I did go travelling the first time I didn't have a cover, so my sister-in-law made, made me this. A little pouch at the back for my uh, mouse, but again, straightforward, easy, during these lockdown times, have a go at making your own cover. This was just a t-shirt. And it slots inside perfectly and does up. But inside to help protect it and make it more versatile and reversible, she made it of a jean leg of my brother in law's jeans. So that perfect and a good little cover for it. So you don't even have to spend to, to get yourself a cover, have a go at making one yourself. So as I was travelling around a lot, I was always worried about running out of power for my phone, uh, for my uh, camera or anything like that. So I got myself a power pack. This one here is quite heavy, quite bulky, but it's 30,000 megalamps on this one. So it has two USBs, it has an, a USB-C and also it's got a built-in light and it also tells you how much power is left in this. So this hasn't been charged since I come back from India. I come back from India uh, second week I think in 
February, we're now on the 1st of April and it's still showing 99%. So as I said, I haven't charged it since I've been back. I did use it uh, to charge on the train uh, coming back from Birmingham Airport into Coventry just to charge my phone up. So that has done really, really well. And also, I was charging the two or three things. I only used it a couple of times because I was quite lucky. So everywhere I went, there was power and I had lots of spare batteries. But there was one time when I was travelling on a train into Mumbai and the power socket wasn't working on the train. So I charged my phone with it. And the other good thing is it's got a nice light. So it comes in handy at night if you're ever out and you need light. So that takes me to one of the things I wish I had taken with me to India. So one of the things I wish I had taken with me to India was a torch. I did a lot of walking around at night as well as during the day. But at night, as I'm walking around, the street lights weren't very great and you'd be walking into lots of busy, heavy traffic. Most of the time, cars, tuk-tuks, motorbikes didn't have their lights on, so you didn't actually see them straight away. So I wish I, I had a torch so I could shine the torch to let people know A, I was there, and B, I could see in front of me better. The road surfaces and the paths were very uneven, so that's one thing I do recommend you take with you is either a head torch or some small but quite powerful torch. I do have them at home, I just wish I had packed them with me when I was there. So let's carry on with some other things I took. I took these adapters, power adapters. So reading some reviews. I was told some hostels and hotels take the two pin plugs, some take the three pin plugs. So I ended up buying both. They were cheap, quite straightforward, and quite easy and light to, to carry. So this was good and coming very handy. But when you have a lot of technology, so we had the cameras, we had the laptops, we had the power banks that probably all needed charging. So I got myself an uh, uh, extension. And this extension, what I went for, I wanted one with surge protection because these don't have surge protection built into one. The laptop power supply doesn't have surge protection into it. And the last thing you want is a surge in power and you lose everything. I've been in India before when the power has gone off. I was lucky, I was in a five star hotel, we it had a backup generator. So I wanted something with surge protection in. As I say, you can't buy these power adapters with surge protection in. So this comes with surge protection. The thing about it is, you only need one socket, and you have three sockets then. All with surge protection and everything you need. So that was perfect. But this one also comes with three USB charges. I did take a USB charger with me, thinking my English phone, my Indian phone, and then the power supply for my... Uh, action camera. I could charge that all up from there. But having it like this meant this I didn't use. And that is quite a fair size. If you think of it with my phone, it is quite a size. So, yes, it's light, but it takes up room in the bag, and it's got these pointy things. So you, you drop it in your bag, and you've got your carry, you carry it on your back. It points into you. It's excellent. If I didn't have this, this would have been fine, because also it comes off, and it comes with the Indian uh, socket. So I could have, if I had looked in the box when I first purchased it, 
and you're doing socket onto this. Don't get me wrong, perfect if you haven't got something like this with the free USB socket. And it doesn't go to waste because my daughter's using it at the moment, so yeah. If you buy one like that, I recommend buying one like this, you won't need this. It has a nice long lead. I did find that in a few other places the sockets were halfway up the wall, so you could put this on the floor and that was perfect. Otherwise, You'd have things dangling. My power supply for my uh, laptop is only about that long, and then you've got the power box, and then you've got a longer cable. So if I put that in the wall, it'd be hanging on the wall. So this was perfect to use, and especially in the hostel as well, where you only got one socket next to your bed, and you've got another socket all the way down on the floor. You're on the top bunk. You can put that in down there, and you can still have this whole so yeah I do recommend as I said the power surging it was why I bought it but the added bonus was these three sockets so good to have but if you got the, the extension with the USB sockets another thing you don't need to really take with this is a smaller power supply power bank I say that's the one I took. This is the one I already had at home, and this will probably be the one I will take next time. If you are going to travel and you think you're going to be away from having electricity points, I would highly recommend taking the powerful one. As I was going from hostel to hostel or hotel to hotel, this would have been this would have been perfect for me. I say prices like only ten. 10,000 megalamps, this one's 30,000 megalamps. So this one, if I was going, as I had planned to do, is going to the smaller villages, yes, that would have been perfect for me. With USB cables, I purchased three before I left and went for the longest ones, you know, if possible, because I never knew where the socket was going to be. These were perfect for charging my phone. I did take photos on my phone, what I wanted to put onto my laptop. Then I found out these wouldn't sync with my phone. So they were power it, but they don't have the capability of syncing your data. So before you go, make sure the cables that you get, you're able to sync with your phone and your laptop. Absolutely. one thing that did let me down and one learn I did take was just because you wrote on before and they worked, don't think they're going to work when you're buying another set test before you leave so we're coming to the end of the technology I took with me of course I took my standard mobile phone in England most of ours only come with a single SIM so when I went to India I wasn't going to use my data and that on this so, I did take my spare phone and I got a SIM while I was there. So, the first place I went to in Delhi, they helped source me a SIM card. Put it in. Please remember to take your SIM extractor with you. But, yeah, the SIM went in. I got one for. 600 rupees and it gave me unlimited data each day uh, I think it was 100 minute worth of phone calls and 3 SMS and that was for um, about 60 days as I say just over 600 rupees so perfect and it worked one thing I did find out is when you're moving from city to city make sure you've got data roaming on because I turned data roaming off thinking I, I didn't want an extra cost or anything when I got from Delhi down to my next city I didn't it wasn't showing any network uh, any data and just by switching on the data roaming then 
more of the messages cited to come through. So that's one thing I did learn is data roaming has to be switched on your Indian SIM when you're going from one state into another state. But yeah, so I ended up carrying two phones around which was a bit of a pain. Maybe I should have had a look just for a cheap two SIM uh, phone before I went because carrying both did weigh my pockets down a little bit because I wanted to keep on to take photos quickly. So I was looking at Google Maps on this while taking photos on this one, which as I, as I only took my action cam with people doing know me and uh, like take photos. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Other thing I recommend is your sports watch or your fitness tracker or whatever. As I say, I did walk miles, kilometres, 400 kilometres just over. I, I think I will publish my uh, my, my graph on, on my walking. This did keep track of every step I took and even if I didn't want to carry my phones around if I was just nipping down to a, a shop or somewhere keeping track of what you did because you'll be amazed on how much you walk or I was amazed on how much I walked I was surprised when I, well, I think one day it was 34 kilometers I walked it didn't feel like it I enjoyed every moment of it because I was outside with the Indian people all that hustle all that bustle but the smells the noise it was all fantastic but yeah I highly recommend you get a fitness tracker for while you're there this isn't technology, but it's something I did take with me. My own knife and fork set. And I took a, there was a, a metal uh, straw as well. I only took the knife fork and the small spoon and the straw. I could clean it. I had uh, hand wipes uh, to clean it. And I just use this when it wasn't wise to use my hands or use the utensils that they, they give me. I ate an awful lot of street food. Most of my food was street food and I was worried about being coming ill or anything like that. I never became ill from street food at all and I don't know if it was down to using the clean cutlery or using my hands where possible. but. It kind of gave me a sense that it was safe to eat. So I don't know if that was psychological, but I do recommend having that, taking on white where you go. And it's better for the environment than using them throwaway ones, the plastic ones they, they give out all the time. But that is it from the kind of technology I took with me. I know it's been quite a long, quite a I know it's been quite a long winded uh, video it's what people have asked for in my next video I will talk possibly about the clothes I took with me uh, but if you have any questions please comment below please like and subscribe and that way you'll get to see when the next video comes out I hope I've answered most of what I took with me and why I took it with me and the logic I use for why I didn't take some things with me. As I say, on the technology side of it, the only thing I wish I had taken with me was the torch. Everything else was thought of before I went. The torch was the only thing that, that kind of let me down. And, but, yeah, I've kind of enjoyed going through this. It's brought back some of the memories of when I was there. But please. please, any comments, any questions, put them below or uh, send them directly to me. Please like and subscribe. And if there's anything else you would like to see, let me know. But stay safe, look after each other. See you soon.